Hi everybody, welcome to another quarterfinals edition of Game Central presented by Bear Complex Get Better. I'm Sean Woodland with uh, Annie Sakamoto. We are through four tests of the quarterfinals, one remain, and this is, you know, really felt like a, a regionals competition. Yeah, I think this has been a really good test so far, mm -hmm. Sean, given the format, given the parameters. I have no doubt that at the end of this, the folks that are going to move on to the semifinals are truly the people who yeah. deserve to be there. Yeah, no question. Let's just set the table here and let you know where we stood coming into the day with the overall standings from each continent. Uh, and we start in Africa, where Michelle Bassnet was your overall leader. Then over in Asia, it was Alexander Busanova who had the overall lead there. In Europe, Laura Horvath on top of the leaderboard and in North America a pair of teenagers leading the way Emma Carey in first followed closely by Mal O'Brien uh, in South America it was Larissa Cunha and then in Oceana no shock here as Tia Tumi Orr is your overall leader we've been talking about the two teenagers in North America all weekend long and we're gonna do it again just in case you're, <laughs> you're just tuning in right now but what Emma Carey and Mal O'Brien are doing, if anybody had any doubts about them being for real, the jury is, the verdict is in on this. Those two are definitely for real. Right, and we've seen this happen where we have two ladies that finished inside the top five mm -hmm. in the World Wide Open, and then, you know, the test changes, whether it's regionals or in this case, the quarterfinals test, uh, it gets a little harder, it gets a little heavier, and we see these names kind of disappear. That has not been the case with these two ladies. So to see them on top of the leaderboard, not just still within the mix, but on top, mm -hmm is super impressive. You know, we have this final test, uh, a heavier barbell snatching. I'm curious to see how, they're, how they'll do, but I have no doubt that yeah. they are not going to move out of contention for the semifinals at this yeah. point. And that final test, and we mentioned regionals, this is one that you would probably see uh, in the old regional format close out the competition because it is fast. Only, just, only two movements, snatches and burpee box jump overs and very low reps, nine, six, and three, 135 pounds for the women and a 30 inch box and just like all the other tests that we talked about probably got to go unbroken on this I if was, you want to have a good score. Yep, I was just going to say, it's not how fast you can do singles at this barbell. It is who's going to go unbroken on that barbell, just like the wall balls yesterday. That's going to make the difference. And then I'm really um, curious to see how these ladies are going to handle the 30-inch box, but I have no doubt that we're going to be extremely impressed by how mm -hmm. all of these women deal with that 30-inch box, which, you know, there's not many times where the men's height and the right. women's height is the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a fun little twist from uh, Castro, I love it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch, and we're going to have two separate uh, matchups for you. The first one, we're going to highlight four athletes from North America because this is the battle for the top spot on the North American leaderboard for the women. We're going to have the two teenagers, Emma Carey and Mal O'Brien, going up against uh, two women who can move some weight, Danny Spiegel and Amanda Barnhart. This will be a really cool side-by-side -side comparison be between you know, two established athletes who we know have no problem with strength and then uh, two younger athletes who are you know, hoping to put some pressure on the old guard. Right, I love this. You know, the, the four out of the five top American females mm -hmm. are going. They're only separated by 18 points right now, which we know. I mean, this is this is a couple of seconds on each end of mm -hmm. this uh, test right here. So like you said, to see this youth movement versus kind of the stronger ladies of CrossFit establish well-known lifters, this is going to be a really fun matchup to watch. This edition of Game Central is sponsored by Bear Complex, and you can visit bearcomplex.com and use the promo code CrossFit20. That's CrossFit20 to get 20% off your order today. Battle for the top spot on the North American leaderboard. Emma Carey and Mal O'Brien, the two teenagers on top of your screen. Danny Spiegel and Amanda Barnhart on the bottom. 963 of snatches at 135 pounds and burpee box jump overs at 30 inches. Interesting to see Maffrey O'Brien going for that uh, one and dump. Uh, whereas these other ladies are going with the touch and go approach, which like we just said, Sean, I think is going to be a lot faster. But She's proven herself so far that she knows what she's doing, so I'm going to guess she's got a game plan here. 
Danny Spiegel looking like she's going fast singles. Amanda Barnhart ripped off about a set of three or four and decided to put it down. Now she's going singles. Uh, Emma Carey squatting a little bit, almost a squat snatch. And now Spiegel onto the box jumps, Barnhart onto the box jump overs. Emma Carey is there, and now here comes Mal O'Brien. And this will be interesting, Sean. You know, both Emma Carey and Mallory O'Brien did really well in that front, uh, the front squat for Rhett Max. Uh, something that was actually pretty surprising to me considering their age. Cycling a heavy barbell is always a little bit different than absolute strength though. So I'm curious to see, you know, come the round of six, can they hang on to that pace with that barbell? Danny Spiegel already back to the barbell. Spiegel on her set of six and going with those fast singles. Now Matt O'Brien, the upper right hand part of your screen, and Emma Carey, they're both back to the barbell. And here comes Amanda Barnhart for the set of six. And I believe that's Chandler Smith in the back Good of job, Barnhart's sweetie. screen you can see right there. Again, advantage goes to some of these athletes who have another high level athlete, be it male or female, to do these tests with. Uh, it just helps keep you on a true pace. And now Amanda Barnhart has taken the lead as she Maybe put it down one time during that set. Danny Spiegel continues with singles. So Barnhart in the lead. Danny Spiegel now in second. Emma Carey is back to the box for her set of six. And Mal O'Brien is putting up the finishing touches on her set of six snatches. And now she's at the box. And you saw Emma Carey, she was squat snatching that bar, which obviously taxes the legs a lot more, especially when you're pairing it with burpee box jump overs at 30 inches. But if she can keep moving, you know, she only has three snatches left. I don't think it's going to hurt her too bad. So Barnhart back for her set of three. Emma Carey on the upper left is your overall leader coming into this test. If Danny she Spiegel loses to Mal O'Brien, O'Brien will jump her on the overall leaderboard. So no rep for Mal O'Brien on that first snatch as Amanda Barnhart's getting ready to finish up and she has done it 228 it looks like on the screen. Unbelievable time for Amanda Barnhart and now Danny Spiegel working her way to the box. She's going to try to wrap up second place in this fantasy matchup that we have going on and Emma Carey is trying to hold off Mal O'Brien. So Spiegel's going to come in at 246. Oh, look at Emma just sitting in the hole of that squat snatch, but able to stand it up, unlike Danny Spiegel, who actually missed her first rep on that snatch, and Mal O'Brien, who missed a rep. Mal O'Brien is in at 259. Sub three minutes. Which means she will leapfrog Emma Carey, who comes in at 307 in this first of our two featured matchups. So two impressive performances from the two teenagers in a test that could have easily tripped them up. They get through more or less unscathed, but how about Amanda Barnhart showing why she is often a name that comes up when you talk to people and they say, well, who do you think could wind up on the podium? She's a name that a lot of people like to throw out there. And she is so strong, Sean. Mm -hmm. And definitely when it comes to um, Olympic lifting, either cycling the barbell or one rep max kind of stuff, uh, she is definitely one of my favorite athletes to watch. She had no missed reps, super clean performance. Great job to Amanda Barnhart. Now she uh, is an impressive athlete and looking forward to seeing what she does as she advances into the semifinals. We have one more featured matchup here. Four more athletes. Three of the names you're definitely going to recognize. We have Danielle Brandon from North America and then Tia Claire Toomey Orr from Oceana. Cara Saunders from Oceana. That's going to be a great matchup to watch. But then Gabriela Moratti out of Brazil. What do we know about her? Well, she was actually the, the 2017 fittest teen in Brazil. Uh, she's currently, um, she got first in the front squat, 302 pounds in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Still super yeah. impressive number to put up, over 300 pounds. And she actually finished 47th worldwide in the Open this year. So a name that we haven't seen yet, but actually not surprising to see that, uh, you know, strength numbers wise mm -hmm. um, and where she sits currently on that South American League board that she is in this final heat. And the battle for the lead in Oceana and then two other very impressive athletes who have put up some very good performances so far in the quarterfinals throwing down here in featured matchup number two of test number five. Danielle Brandon and Gabriella Moratti will be at the top of your screen and the battle for Oceana is at the bottom. Tia Claire Toomey Orr and Cara Saunders this is going to be a fun one to watch. 963 snatches and burpee box jump overs. We start with those nine snatches at 135 pounds. Tia Toomey immediately going to singles here. Right, I mean, I, I wonder if Toomey's going to make me eat my words when I said <laughs> that you have to go touch and go, but these other ladies, uh, you know, Cara is still doing touch and go reps right here through the nines. 
Danielle Brandon has held on for all nine so far. Gabriella Moratti taking a break, and Cara Saunders has also gone touch and go. So Danielle Brandon will be the first in the Burby box jump overs. Cara Saunders is second. Tia Toomey Orr still working on her first set of nine, and now she is on to the Burby box jump overs. And you know, Sean, just five points separate Tia Toomey Orr and Cara Saunders right now. So it'll be interesting to see if Cara can make her move for that first place spot in Oceana in this test. And already the group in this featured matchup is ahead of the pace that we saw in the last featured matchup. Most of the athletes in that first featured matchup, around 40 seconds I think is when they got to that first set of uh, uh, Burby box jump overs. It's a set of nine, and now Danielle Brandon in the upper left moving back to the barbell to begin her set of six. Gabriella Moratti is back to the barbell as well, and now Tia Toomey Orr has made up ground on Cara Saunders, and she knocks out her first rep of six. Danielle Brandon also looking like she's going to start going to singles here on the round of six. No touch and go, just as I say that. She continues to hang on, so two reps, and now the barbell is down, and Tia Toomey Orr on the bottom left still going singles at 135. And impressively, both Gabriella Moratti and Cara Sanders are still doing touch and go as well. Danielle Brandon is now on her set of six. Burpee box jump over. She is in the lead. Tia Toomey Orr and Cara Saunders get to the box at about the same time, and Gabriella Moratti working on her set of six as well. Look at how fast Tia is on these burpee box jump overs. That really, you can tell that that really is where she's making up her time. You know, she's she's more controlled on that barbell, but she's just so fast on these perfect box jump overs. Marathi was first back to the barbell just ahead of Danielle Brandon. This is the set of three. And now Saunders and Toomey Orr on their final sets of three. Danielle Brandon gets through those and back to the box along with Gabriella Marathi. This is going to be a close finish. Cara Saunders to the box right ahead of Toomey Orr. But remember, Toomey Orr has been faster on these. Danielle Brandon getting set to close out her test, 223. Gabriella Moratti just one second behind her, and Potia Toomey Orr and Cara Saunders tie at 227. Fantastic finish there in Oceana between Tia Toomey Orr and Cara Saunders. Here are the top scores by continent. Michelle Baznet in Africa at 322, and Alexandra Buzanova in Asia, 255. If you watched that last matchup, you were wondering who Gabriella Moratti is. I think she has a lot of people's attention right now. Right, considering that on test four, four rep max front mm -hmm. squat, she puts up 302 pounds. Uh, and then that smoking time of 224 in that test five. If you didn't know who she was before, you better know her name now. We didn't talk a whole lot about Laura Horvath coming into this or, or through the open. Maybe mentioned her a couple of times, but... What she did in Test 5 really solidifies her hold as maybe the top athlete in Europe. Definitely. She was first going into this final test mm -hmm. in Europe. She puts up a time of 3.01, which is good for fifth place and most likely good to keep her in that first place position. So super impressive. Uh, you know, also her 23rd place on that Test 1 that involved handstand push-ups. You could say 23rd is not great, but looking at Horvath, that's a really good score for mm -hmm. her. And look at the number of the people who are in this competition. Exactly. That 23rd might actually not be as bad as 23rd when right. you el eliminate people who are not moving to the next level. So definitely want to keep an eye uh, on Laura Horvath. Uh, Haley Adams, she finished strong as well in North America. And she really needed to, Sean. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she finished 515th on the front squat. We know that absolute strength is not Haley's uh, forte, but, but really she does better with power movements. And so she needed to prove that she really does deserve to be kind of, you know, where she left off last year, mm -hmm. getting fourth place at the games. And she has a time of 307, which is good for 28th overall in North America. So great job from Haley Adams. I think, you know, that while that front squat tripped her up a little bit, again, we see her cycling a heavier barbell with the power yeah. option. She does well. Let's take a look at the overall standings now after five tests. And these are all unofficial. And we start in Africa where it looks like Michelle Baznet will hang on to the top spot by seven points over Dinah Swift. And all the women in the top five are from South Africa. Over in Asia, Alexander Buzanova, she right now is your winner of that continent. In Europe, Laura Horvath will hang on to the top spot, followed by Gabriela Magala and Kristen Holta. In North America, check this out, we got a tie at the top between Amanda Barnhart and Danny Spiegel. Again, all this is unofficial. Mal O'Brien, one point back of them, and then a tie for fourth between Emma Carey and Brooke Wells. And Oceana, Tia Toomey Orr, and Cara Saunders are your top two. And in South America, Larissa Kuna holds off Melina Rodriguez and Sasha Nieves. So let's 
talk about some of the best performances we've seen. And once again, you cannot ignore what Mal O'Brien and Emma Carey are doing here. Right. I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, mm -hmm. but I am so impressed by both of these ladies to finish where they did in the Open. You know, we said at the start of this weekend that this this is where the test really separates the mm -hmm. elite and, and the people who should be at the top of the leaderboard and those that are just kind of playing around and having fun. And both of these ladies are going to end up on the top of the leaderboard. Now, you have to look at both of these competitions were virtual. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen under the the assumption that their semifinals of semifinal events are in person. Right. How will these ladies perform when it's you know not their home gym? Uh, they don't they don't have all of the creature comforts that they might be used to. They both competed at the games before mm -hmm. in the teenage division, but you know that now they're with the big girls. So right. very interested to see how they do, but very impressed with how they did. Let's give someone uh, some recognition that I know you and I both can relate a little bit more to here. Finishing right now 109th, going on to the semifinal round, Masters athlete Becca Voigt. So we could take Mal O'Brien's age yeah. and Emma Carey's age, <laughs> put them together, and they're yep. still not as old as Rebecca Voigt. Such an impressive performance. And I talked with Becca before this uh, before this event started, mm -hmm. and I asked her, you know, if you qualify for the semifinals, will you do it, or are you just going to focus on on the Masters? And she said, no way. If she qualifies, she's going to the semifinals. She is just such a solid, steady athlete, and and just uh, you know never, never ceases to amaze me oh, with yeah. what she can do. Yeah, she is incredible. 40 years old, 109th and going on uh, to the semifinals. What made you sort of raise your eyebrow? Maybe not in a way that you thought, okay, I'm really shocked by that, but sort of, you know, Hmm. Don't know if I expected that here. Well, first would be uh, individual athlete uh, Courtney Haley. Mm -hmm. So she actually, as of right now, is south of the cut line. She's 34th place in Oceania, which means she would not qualify to move on. Who knows what will happen, you know, if some people deny them, mm -hmm. their invitation. Um, and, and the bummer with Courtney is she didn't necessarily bomb out on any tests this weekend, but she just didn't do well enough on any of them to kind of push her north of that cut line. So really unfortunate for her. Again, we don't know. All the scores aren't completely official, so things may change. And uh, there are some athletes who you know, maybe didn't finish as high as we thought, and that could be by design, but you, you look at what Catherine Davis' daughter did, and that's maybe you just – just raise a little bit of an eyebrow. Not You're not going to panic, but you might just raise an eyebrow. Exactly. She finished 11th in Europe. So again, when you look at the pool of athletes mm -hmm. that she's competing against, that's nothing to shake a stick at. You right. have a lot of veteran games athletes. Uh, like you said, Sean, I'm not worried about her finishing in 11th. It's quite likely that it's by design. But you compare that to Kristen Holta, who, who finished third place again a masters athlete and you could say is not she's qualified you know she's just doing this this um weekend to qualify right. it's a means to an end mm -hmm. uh, but she finished in third place so just a little curious to me again i'm not worried about the two-time champ and katrin david's daughter but it, it makes you raise an eyebrow yeah first time we've been through uh, the quarterfinals like mm -hmm. this this has been fun to follow, I think. Amazing. Yeah. Such a good time. And I think, again, it is this great blend of the masses, you know, the the, the top 10%, which is really a lot of people mm -hmm. still being able to participate, uh, but really separating the elite from yeah. the rest of this competition. And, you know, we talked earlier, we looked at a lot of these tests on paper and we thought, oh, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to go. And like always, mm -hmm. our expectations were not just met. They were blown yeah. out of the water. Uh, like we said, some of these times on some of these tests, the, the weights that ladies put up, unbelievable. Yeah, and I love the fact that some people who might be thinking about you know, dedicating their lives to this and becoming a competitor did the quarterfinals and got a real taste of what it would take to you know, advance to that next level. So it was, a, it was a fun test to watch, and I hope everybody had fun with it. I know we've had fun uh, covering it. We will have uh, full coverage of the men's final test coming up uh, a little bit later, but we also want to tell you that if you're watching this, what we want you to do is we want to think about a matchup that you might want to see from one of these tests for the women. And we need you to, in the comments, Tell us what test you want to see and the four athletes you want to see do it. We will take those comments and we'll put together a vote. We'll let everyone vote on that. And then we will show you the winning matchup later on this week. So be sure to comment here on this video with the matchup and then the four athletes you want to see do it. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Game Central here for Test 5 of the quarterfinals for the women. For Annie Sakamoto, I'm Sean Woodland. We hope everybody had fun watching and doing those quarterfinal events. And we'll talk to you next time.